This is Juan. Born in 1980, Juan grew up as the only child of Maria and Pablo in Mexico City. Juan's family is very wealthy. This is Mexico. Mexico has about 122 million inhabitants. And here, a bit in the south, we have the country's capital, Mexico City. Within the metropolitan area of Mexico City, there are more than 21 million inhabitants. At the moment, healthcare in Mexico is based on employment status. The IMSS covers private sector workers and employees of non-governmental corporations. ISSSTE covers governmental workers. The employees' families are automatically insured as well. The remaining lack of adequate access to public healthcare coverage. Jorge is one of them, since his father is unemployed and only occasionally earns money with black labor. Juan's father's job at the government makes him and his family profit from benefits of the ISSSTE insurance. Juan has unhealthy eating habits and already becomes diabetic in primary school. Obesity, especially in children, has become a growing problem for Mexico during these years. After Juan graduated, he decides to buy land in Chiapas and start his own farm business together with his best friend Jorge. Since a few years, Jorge has heart problems. He needs many treatments a month. This not only takes a lot of time traveling to a doctor in the next city, but also the spendings on medications are getting too high. He is forced to move back to the city and find a job to get financial support by the IMSS. In April 2003, the Congress approved a new insurance scheme, commonly referred to as Seguro Popular, with the goal of achieving universal coverage by 2010. The previously uninsured will be covered by the Seguro Popular. Since everyone is now able to be insured by the Seguro Popular, Jorge directly leaves the city and travels to Chiapas to become self-employed again, supporting Juan on the farm. Twelve years ago, Juan's father Pablo was shot with political background. Interpersonal violence was rapidly growing in the last years. From 2005 until now it has increased by 35%. The other main causes of death have increased as well. Heart diseases, diabetes, kidney diseases. The development of main causes of death, like Juan's father had to experience, demonstrate the high violence in Mexico. All of the three main causes of death are non-communicable and caused by the individual's behavior. People's nutrition choices tend to meals high in sugar and fat and leave Mexico to face the emerging cause of death, obesity. But not only food choices need to be mentioned. High consumption of soda has also become a serious problem. The Mexican government has struggled in the past to successfully implement prevention laws and campaigns that would affect the lifestyle-based diseases of Mexican people. That is why Mexico introduced a soda tax in 2014, increasing taxes on sugary beverages to 10%. Studies estimate the tax to prevent about 200,000 new cases of diabetes. The reason why Jorge had to leave Chiapas was very simple. Before the reform 2003, the inequities between insured and uninsured people in Mexico were very significant. However, the inequities of geographical location and population groups are still relevant, since communicable diseases are more concentrated among the poor and rural populations. As a result, these groups show higher infant and maternal mo mortality than the general population. There is a 10 year difference in life expectancy in areas with the highest level of marginalization and urban areas with better health. The goal of achieving universal coverage by 2010 has been almost fulfilled by now. Still, each institution has its own independent network of doctors, clinics, hospitals, pharmacies, treatment centers and unions. People are bound to their insurance institutions. In other words, an ISS STE beneficiary living next door to an IMSS pharmacy could not fill a covered prescription at that facility and would have to travel to the nearest ISS STE pharmacy, or he would have to pay out of pocket at a retail pharmacy. A miserable choice to make. Also for Jorge, although he is now insured, he still needs to travel a lot to get his medical treatments. Each of the institution maintains its own drug and device formularies and develops its own standards of care, which can vary considerably. The net result for the system is that persons covered by different institutions have access to different medicines and devices despite having equal rights to access to healthcare. 
People not satisfied with the quality of drugs within their healthcare institutions tend to buy higher quality medications from private institutions if they can afford it. This leads to Mexico's high rate of out-of-pocket spendings. But let's first have a look how much Mexico actually spends on healthcare. These low health expenditures are one reason for high out-of-pocket spendings of 45% and can make a long-term illness catastrophic, as we have seen in Jorge's situation. Mexico has done a very good job since the health reform in providing health care for its population. The reform in 2003 was absolutely essential and could have been initiated years before already since they were facing a serious lack of health insurance for a big part of the population. However, the quality of health services, medication and access still differs greatly between healthcare institutes. Allowing people to choose treatment facilities independent from institute would be necessary to guarantee better access to facilities and balance of workloads. Bigger insurance institutions like Seguro Popular, with tremendous amount of people, have too busy working shifts resulting in labor strife while for example hospitals of other institutions are underperforming. The exchange of patients' records between insurance institutions would ensure that physicians can treat patients effectively. The only solution for all these imbalances is the formation of one universal cooperating healthcare system instead of three independent ones. A cooperation would shift and split patients equally, ensuring better access to treatment facilities and safe workplaces for physicians. The current attempts to prevent an unhealthy lifestyle are just a drop in the bucket in the fight against diabetes and obesity. The Mexican government will have to rethink its funding policy to, amongst other things, increase success in prevention campaigns in the coming couple of years. Even though there are still many challenges to face, Mexico is on the right way in achieving their goals, especially as the current president, Peña Nieto, is planning to set an universal institute in place to allow equal access to health services around the country. Mexico has already and should continue to learn from challenges of their population. Juan and Jorge were very pleased to meet you and share their main challenges about the health system of Mexico. Nevertheless, there are many more topics that they would be happy to discuss with you like sport policies, promotion or pollution. So please do not hesitate to contact them.